Yo, what's up everybody? This is Jose from Southern Life. Welcome to Bradenton, Florida. So like after the hurricane, we wanted to stay close to home, but we knew we didn't want to really be in Fort Myers and Naples right after the hurricane. So we ended up moving over here simply because of proximity. So it wasn't like I picked this out. It's just, this is just where life put us, you know? I didn't really bring my fishing pole today, but you can see water is just coming from underneath there. I'm going to guess if you threw a nice little DOA shrimp or any like artificial suspending lure into that hole right there, you will definitely get a snook or who knows what's in that water. But I was like, hey, you know, we're still close to Fort Myers and Naples. Um, it's like the only place we could find the rain right after the hurricane too. So we just ended up here by chance. But I'll tell you, I'm actually starting to fall in love with the city of Bradenton. One of the absolute awesome things about Bradenton is the amount of new construction that there is here. So you can rent brand new apartments if you're not into buying. Just like Bradenton sits on the Manatee River, Fort Myers sits on the Caloosahatchee River. And when Hurricane Ian came through the Caloosahatchee River, which is only like 100 miles south of here, literally where we're standing right now, the water would have been like literally to my neck. Imagine that. Just like Branton sits on the water and it has a river going through it, Fort Myers does as well. And the river in Fort Myers, we're talking to my neck. That's how high the water came up in downtown Fort Myers. But there's a lot of parks and it's just an awesome city. So right here in downtown Bradenton, in 1841, Joshua Gates built the first home south of Tampa. A few years later, Ezekiel Glazer built his home on this land as well. All right guys, so let's just take a little walk through downtown Bradenton. It's like an 84 Buick Rivera. There really wasn't much in South Florida in the 1840s. So the fact that there was a few houses in this little area, one building that's always caught my attention since the moment I moved into Branton is that building right there because they still have their vintage signs up front. The town of Manatee, 1903. Really awesome older sign here. I think it looks awesome. And there's a store here, and I guess they say, I guess it's just like a corner store from looking at the outside. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is. It looks like just a is it a corner store? It's a pharmacy. As you see, it's like a real functioning pharmacy. And they just have a lot of like really just kind of older pharmaceutical stuff. So what's cool about this store, it's just you still have like all these old signs. It literally feels like this is like the 1940s or something. It's awesome. This is literally still an awesome pharmacy. Like it literally feels like you just walk into a pharmacy like back in the 1900s. And that is so cool. There's a mural of a cow surfing over here and a pig going to the beach.
Oh, there's like a little fishing pier here. That's awesome. It's fishing pier. There's a snook right there going that way. Pretty good sized snook. Here's a mural of the Calusa Indians. They inhabited Southwest Florida. And the capital of the Calusa Empire would have been in the 1500s. Their capital city was in Estero, Florida, back home in which in Naples and Fort Myers, where I used to live. Until, of course, my ancestors, the Spaniards, Los Conquistadores de España, came. That, my friends, is a good sign for the fishermen that you can actually see the fish in the water. Since a lot of people do come swimming here, let's see if there's anything here worth picking. I'm actually going to take my shoes off right here and go barefoot and see what we can find here. Oh, look at the size of that little fish right there. The tide is very high today on this side, so that doesn't make it really the easiest, but we'll see. You just never know. What type of fish are those, man? Look, they're colorful. I think we call these in Florida mollies. Is the name of that fish, but you don't really see them that big and that colorful that often. I'm gonna guess that there's people that live right on these bridges out of their cars and they just kind of fish and swim and it looks like they're just tourists but they're really homeless people. Somebody's just lost that canoe and left it there. You can tell it's abandoned. Oh wow, manatee, look at that guys. Manatee right there. Just stuck his head out right there. You guys saw that? Manatee just stuck his head out right there. That is so cool. I got my car keys in one pocket. I gotta be careful not to get too far in. You guys catch that? Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at these uh these things. Um horseshoes, I think they're called. There's literally a manatee right in front of us, guys. Let me see if I can put my stuff on the shore real quick. Usually they hang out in the same little area where they move around or something. I'm not sure. I just got started. Oh, nice. Yeah. Literally, the sand's like flying in your eyes. Wow. Wow, look at these waves, bro. Crazy windy out here. Super windy, super crazy. Probably a bad day to go in the water. Look at those waves, man. Wow. Whoa, well, the water feels good. Look at those waves, man. Unbelievable. Wow.
925, it's over. This is the fourth earring that I find in this little area. Another penny. There we go. Literally the same spot. Literally the same spot where the penny was. Quarter. There's a bar here. And there's also a free water fountain. So if you're on the beach and you just need a little break, you can come here and for an exorbitant amount of money buy a drink right on the beach. This is a very well equipped beach. Surface seems like up against these uh, Australian pine trees. There's a lot of a lot of currency here. We've got an Alaska Alaska quarter here. All right, guys. So we have found a dime now. This penny. All right, guys. So we spent a pretty good deal of time on this beach. I'm gonna move to another beach just to switch it up. I was able to get a pretty good parking spot today because it's a weekday and it's windy. But on a weekend, you really got to struggle to find a parking spot here. All right, guys, so now we are in Anna Maria Island. Look at the size of this Australian pine tree. All right, everybody, so welcome to Anna Maria Island. You can see the Skyway Bridge in the distance. That means that we are looking now into Tampa Bay, Florida. You can see the Anna Maria Lighthouse over there to the right of us. And the bridge directly ahead of us. It's kind of calm here, which is nice and good for us. Now, uh, there's the Anna Maria uh, Pier over there. I think you got to pay to get on that one. And we're just going to walk along this little sandy stretch of beach here. Sí, señor. ¿Cómo está? Dígame. Fácil. Sí. Oh, es fácil. Esa batería. Aquí lleva la batería. Todos son diferentes, pero es simple. Mira. So on the north end of Anna Maria Island, you got like this nice little, I don't know if you want to call it a Yeti or something, but just a spot here where people come to fish. And this is one of two piers on the north side of Anna Maria. This is that place where you get some pretty good snook action, maybe redfish, maybe jacks. There's no telling when the water starts moving through here what you can catch. And we discover a fresh quarter here, right in front of the Skyway Bridge. Ahead of us, you can see the Rod and Reel Pier, which is kind of on the north side of Anna Maria Island. It's a restaurant and a fishing pier all at once, so you can eat and you can fish. And the view from there, straight ahead, you can see the Skyway Bridge, is quite the view. So if you're looking for a really fancy restaurant with a great view, my wife barks at me sometimes too, not just dogs relaxed beach because um, the water's not that clear today had a lot of sargassum in Florida but despite the fact the water's not too clear it's generally a very calm beach so if you have kids a lot of people families will uh, prefer this beach simply because of how calm the water is clear beaches here yeah, I'm talking just clear waters beautiful and this is the southern tip of Tampa Bay opening into the Gulf of Mexico sometimes you can even catch big freighters going into Tampa Bay so it's quite a neat little spot real estate on Amaria is very expensive but if you can do it my wife is a realtor you know, don't be afraid to reach out the backyard is literally their own little beach and this beach doesn't look too impressive today but there's times of the year where this little beach here the water is absolutely transparent so don't judge by the fact today's kind of a crappy day with a little bit of sargassum and it's been windy. These beaches get pretty. Every day of year, absolutely not. But there will be times in the year when these beach, this little beach here will be attractive. I guess the only thing you're going to need is just a, a giant vacuum to keep all the sand from going inside the house. Now this one right here looks kind of almost brand new. Look at those coconut trees. Imagine that, man. You buy a house and a sea turtle comes and makes a nest quite literally in your backyard. Can you imagine that? Imagine having a sea turtle put a, make a nest in your backyard. 
could you imagine having a sea turtle make a nest in your backyard? That's pretty cool. I love how they've gone with the glass fences. That's pretty cool. Probably expensive. Our pool in our community has a glass fence. And I'm, I'm telling you, since the time I've been there, I've seen them break at least three times. But I think to replace them, that's how you do fencing right there. And you just need to keep people out of your property. But you don't want to obstruct the view. Glass freaking fencing. That is incredible. Some of these vacation rentals get absolutely ridiculous. The prices on these vacation rentals, unreal. I mean, my like, kitty was telling me that some of these houses can go, at least in Bonita Springs, as high as $27,000 a month. Complaining about the cost of vacation rentals, but keep in mind, you know, it's just the property taxes on a house on the beach will probably run you about, what, 50? Yeah, easily 50 a year. And that's not an exaggeration. That's, you know, depending on what county you're in and property value and all that. But I've seen houses on the beach in Florida pay $53,000 a year in property taxes. So if you were to rent out two months of the year, that would just, two months of it would just be property taxes. So, um, of course, on a property that's cheaper, the, the profit margin will be much larger but total profit could be smaller. But it's not all great. Anything good today? Solamente el amor de mi esposa. Ah, con eso tiene uno, no? Yeah. Eso. Todo lo demás, no sí, encuentro no nada. Tiene. Y después que la encontré ella, no me dejó ni encontrar otras. ¿Verdad? <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, man. Uh, but hey, el que no, bu um, el que no busca, el no encuentra. Busca, no encuentra? Yeah. 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 So we'll keep trying. Today, uh -huh. solamente un anillito, like a woman's earring. Oh, okay. And then that was it. Uh -huh. But yeah. hard work, a little pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it's worth to be out here. It's a yeah. wing hobby, bro. Yeah. Enjoy, bro. Dale. Don't think the vacation rental gig is all profit. There's some ups and downs with that. For sure, you at least gotta be able to make. Okay, I think. I think we've come to the end of the rope here. We gotta turn around. Cause that definitely looks. Okay, no trespassing on seawall beyond this. Well, I'm not gonna go on the seawall. Okay, so you gotta stay on the bottom. Okay. You gotta stay down here. Repairing these seawalls after hurricane damage can also be quite the nightmare. Um, seawall repair is not cheap. Beautiful, man. That water, and that water, even though there's a lot of sargassum in it, that water feels great. I don't care who you are, that water. Feels good. I just sink into this stuff. It's horrible. Oh, quite the work out here. It just sink so fast. Ah, oh, it's a painful walk through here. Right, guys so two finds at the same spot one is a dime that's been here for a while but the number two find can you imagine if you stepped on this little sucker right here that right there is not something you want to step on so it's good that this is no longer on the beach where people swim all right guys so this is the rod and reel fishing pier with that restaurant i was telling you guys about great restaurant with great views You'll see a lot of wildlife on this pier, manatees, dolphins, all that. So I definitely recommend it. The line is usually a long way. You're gonna usually, you'll see a stingray, sea turtles, 
huge snook. In fact, you can just see a snook crawling that way. Oh, that pelican. Make up with the pelicans and the fishing lines. But you'll see here, of course, the snook, they're smart. Like, you'll see them here, but catching one, really catching one, super hard to catch. You'll see them all day, but... I bet if you learn to grip that thing out, that bird would be so big. Oh, dolphin! Dolphin, alright, dolphin somewhere. You always see dolphins here, dolphins, mantis, all that crap. Let's see here. You can see the dolphin over the side of the room. Me and my dad were having dinner here one time, and like you could just see like schools of uh, tarpon chasing mullet. It was awesome. Nice got a fish here. Nope. Oh. Dolphin earlier. All right, guys. So everybody's going whoa because the dolphins are right up in there. But there's definitely dolphins right there. So that makes today. We've seen, there they are, the dolphins, look at them. They are big ones too. So today we've seen dolphins and we have seen manatees. That right there is an experience unique to Florida. In California, you would, there they are right there. You can see the dolphins. Uh, in fact, I could almost swim out to where the dolphins are because it's not that deep, but I don't want to mess with them. But that's a Florida experience to sit, see dolphins and manatees in the same day. Were we in California, there they are right there. In California, you would be looking at humpback whales. The fact that they're just hovering there is incredible. I've never seen anything like that. They're just kind of hovering in one spot. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen because dolphins usually are on the move. I've never seen a dolphin just kind of hover in one spot. But everybody on the pier is definitely excited about the dolphins. You know? sunset we're gonna try to see it on the beach when that happens um we've seen dolphins before so we'll keep it moving but it, it's so cool to, I mean, it's like dolphins and manatees doesn't matter how many times you've seen them it just never gets old you know it really never gets old to see dolphins and manatees and uh that's a florida experience in california you'd see sea otters and um seals and uh, there's a spot where you can see uh elephant seals incredible those things are like the size of a car bigger than a car like the size of an elephant seal is one of those things that you're just gonna have to see it to believe it you know uh, elephant seal you got to see it to believe it i mean it's they're so huge that you see it and you're like wow you know it's hard to wrap your head around how big those elephant seals are but they're huge there's no doubt about that and there they are again they're just hovering there i mean it's just incredible i mean everything around here is awesome this is so amazing there's two states that will blow your mind with their natural beauty florida and california i mean there are two states where it's just the amount of nature that you see Maybe Colorado could be on that level too. Maybe Colorado. Florida, Colorado, and California are two states that are just their natural beauty and their wildlife and everything is just incredible. And I think we have to turn around here. Yep, we gotta turn around. So this is the smallest beach access I've ever seen. It's literally like you're just walking to somebody's back. It feels like you're trespassing. And knowing Florida, I'm surprised nobody's gonna pull it out on us and be like hey boy you're my property boy and just kind of do something like that but somehow some way this is actually a beach access let's see if we can get on the other side of the beach and apparently and allegedly it's a beach access let's see if it takes us somewhere oh it's a very small beach access it's not really uh it's not really uh well 
Well, here's another of these tiny beach access points. Hopefully this one leads to a real beach and not just um, whatever the crap we were on earlier. But here we are. Well, it's beautiful rocks and I'm gonna tell you, this is uh, very unimpressive for a beach access. Seems like the seawall got washed away and it's just for sandbags here. It's definitely not the neatest looking beach. And it almost feels like you're trespassing. It doesn't feel like a public place. But there's the sunset. And quite literally, this has to be the most awkward thing because you're literally on a public beach apparently, but you're literally walking through somebody's house, it feels. Look at this, you're like literally, you're literally on these people's back porch, but you're allegedly on a public beach. The rocks do look majestic, and I'm sure they serve their purpose of keeping um, this, these houses from washing away. Keep in mind, this is the mouth of Tampa Bay. So you're talking about a lot of current, a lot of uh, just, you know, when, when the water's moving through here, it's moving, it's Tampa Bay. You know, whether it's tidal or a storm or whatever. Why do I feel like I'm in somebody's backyard? This, this can't be right. I really don't get these beach accesses. I'm, I'm hoping that if I can get enough far that way, I will no longer be in somebody's backyard. But, um, well, I think we're still premature here. I think we got to get back over there. But I, you can see the purpose of these walls. It's pretty much to keep these people's houses from going for a swim in Tampa Bay. After a very long walk, we made it to Anna Maria Island Beach on north end of the island. Just in time for the sunset. Huge collection of shoes here. Battery's at 3%, so I'm gonna turn it off until something incredible happens. Guys, more dolphins, more dolphins. I just seen a dolphin pop up right in front of us. So awesome, look at how awesome this beach is. There they are right there. More dolphins and more dolphins on the north end of Anna Maria Island. This is just awesome. Dolphins everywhere. Beautiful experience to be out here for a beautiful evening on Anna Maria Island. And yes, dolphins once again. There they are right there, there's two of them. So cool. What a beautiful, majestic place to be.